time for you joining us again for YPWW. And we pray that God has been good to you all week long. And let's begin with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for who you are in our lives. God, we ask that you apply to help us to apply these lessons to our lives as we go forth in your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And thank God. Amen. So we're on the last lesson of this quarter. And I pray that this quarter has been a blessing to you as well as it's been to me. <clears throat> and today we're on lesson number 13, uh, the persecution of the 21st century church. And our lesson text, uh, it says it's coming from Matthew 24, 9 through 25. And the aim of this lesson is to compare the suffering of the 21st century church with its historic suffering, to compare the American church suffering with the rest of the world in the 21st century. Hey Amen. And our lesson text, you know, it, our lesson text that they suggested tonight, it kind of deals with the end times and it deals with uh, the tribulation period. And when you go through, and we won't read a lot of the text, but, uh, you know, the, the basically tells you how the tribulation starts or how the end time will start. You know, Jesus and his disciples was at the temple and he told them the temple would eventually be destroyed and they got their attention and he tells them some stuff that was going to happen at the end and how it was going to be full of deception and full of uh, devastation all over the land. And it lets us know, you know, that false prophets will rise, you know, and people will be coming saying that they Christ. And here we see the antichrist and false prophets. And, you know, deception comes in a lot of forms. And then nowadays, a lot of it is coming in the form of movements, you know, like the LGBTQ movement and the polygamy movement, Satanism, things of that nature. And, you know, it mentions about the wars and rumors of wars. And it mentions about famines and pestilences. You know, that's something we don't have to reach far for, to think about when we think about uh, COVID-19. And, you know, so basically our lesson text really deals with uh, what will be taking place in the tribulation period or if you want to say in the end times. But when we think about the persecution of the 21st century church and we try to apply that, all of these lessons to our lives, uh, let's go to John 15 verse 20. Remember, it says, remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. And the word of God is blessing. So when we look at all these lessons, we see the one common denominator is that everyone who was persecuted was persecuted because of their faith and proclamation that Jesus Christ is Lord. So when you hear Jesus say this, it's not a fact of if you're going to be persecuted, if you're a saint, it's when you're going to be persecuted. But when that persecution comes, we got to remember that it only confirms our identity in Jesus Christ. Because in verse 15 in chapter in John 15 and 18, the word of the Lord says, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. So the world hates Jesus. And when the world sees Jesus in us. The world going to hate us as well. So persecution comes because the world has seen that we identify with Jesus Christ. We connect with Jesus Christ. We remember Matthew 5, 10 through 12. And the word of the Lord says, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So persecution, if we learn anything from this quarter, it, it gives us an opportunity to show our loyalty to Christ. Uh, a lot of people uh, silence themselves now because, you know, of whatever social circles they are in or to be fit in it, to fit in or, you know, they compromise in order to just get along and we can't we can't be silent when it's an opportunity for us to stand up because you know that's our chance to show god how much we really care and how much we love him so we can't be afraid to be open 
with our faith in God, in our faith in Jesus Christ, just because it's going to bring persecution. And, you know, Christians and saints, they are still being put to death, you know, like in places like Sudan and these Muslim countries, Indonesia, you know, the churches are being burned and Christians are getting murdered. And we still have to be praying for those people. You know, we the foreign territories, our missionaries and all of those who are over there doing the work, you know, they're facing persecution and being jailed, you know, being done wrong because of their faith in Jesus Christ. And Second Timothy 3 and 12 tells us as believers that, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So here Paul is telling Timothy that if you real and you really mean this and you really in there with Christ and you really want to be loyal to him, persecution is going to come your way. But first Peter, Peter tells us and warns us and lets us know, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fire trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. So when we are looking at persecution throughout this whole quarter, you know, if we are faithful in ministry and if we are faithful in identifying with Jesus Christ, the word in all of these lessons lets us know that persecution will come our way. And that's all based and stemmed off of our belief in Jesus Christ. So this whole quarter really hasn't been encouraging us not to be hesitant to go forth in God. You know, we have to willingly be ready to accept persecution when it comes our way. Now, when it comes to persecution, we've been talking about a lot of physical things and there is physical persecution. You know, you can you can get beat, you can get thrown in jail, you know, you can be starved. Uh, you know, murder. But there's mental persecutions that come as well. When you stand for Christ, it, it takes a mental toll on you when you have to forsake your family, your friends, and your loved ones, or when someone lies on you or they offend you. You know, those are forms of persecution that the church may face as well. So, this, you know, to end this quarter and just encouraging you as saints of God, this is why we need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost because he is our comforter and the Holy Ghost will fill our mind with the peace of God that passes all understanding. That way we'll be able to withstand those persecutions when they come. So I thank God for this quarter. I thank God for these lessons. And just like I said, this is a brief summary of the quarter. And, you know, like I said, our lesson text deals more with the end times and the tribulation period. I just wanted to give you a few scriptures to apply to us now as we go forth into our next quarter. Just to remember that why do the righteous suffer? Remember, it's all for the glory of God. He cares about what you're going through. He cares about what you're facing. So trust in God. Lean not to your own understanding and he will direct your path. God bless you. God keep you. I know you hear someone at the door, so I got to go. But I love you. We are praying for you. You pray for us and we'll see you next week.